Hi everyone, this is Rita Peterson with Everything Homemade and I am going to talk to you today about aphids. Um, how exciting. Um, to start off with, uh, I got, got an awesome question um, from a viewer about aphids and dill. Now, aphids and dill um, is an excellent question. How do I prevent my aphids from killing my dill? Now, it, it stems onto many more. I mean, aphids cover all kinds of plants. You can have um, green aphids, blue aphids, black aphids, and they um, vary in colors because um, they like certain plants. So you can have, um, let's say like a black aphid will attack a cherry tree, for example. Um, <clears throat> green aphids will attack um, many flower plants such as dill um, and, and blue aphids, again, a specific kind of plant. So we are going to just talk about aphids in general um, I'm including all the colors um, and have a little talk here because I battle with the same thing. So I'm going to just share my experience with you and and hopefully it helps and uh, and I would love to hear you know comments, um, uh, different different ideas, um, stuff like that, that 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 you have tried that I haven't mentioned. I would love to hear from you. So thanks again for all your comments and let's dive into the topic of aphids. So um, to begin with, I live in town. Now I grew up on a farm um, about four hours from here in northern um, Alberta called a little town called Manning and I actually lived about 35 miles north yet of Manning. And we lived in an area, um, all around us was a valley um, with a river, so we were actually quite isolated, um, but, but we grew beautiful gardens, and growing up, I never had to battle aphids. I mean, I'd never seen my mom battle aphids, I've never seen my grandma battle aphids, um, I've never seen explosions like I do now, so looking back, I'm, I come up um, with the theory that growing in town um, and, and looking at the ecosystem around me, the ecosystem has to be off. There's not enough predators um, for uh, for the prey, and the and and the aphids and the pests are taking over, and and I don't see the predators um, enough. So in my garden, I try to grow the plants. Um, that attract the predators like lace wings and um, uh, ladybugs. Those are the two major that, that just devour aphids. And the other thing is growing up, I mean, we grew dill, like rows of dill. It was absolutely crazy. And I never took a second second thought of it until I moved away and 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 now I garden in in the city of Grand Perry which I I hope we can move soon because I I'm looking for for a bigger bigger spot but we have a garden 32 feet by 57 feet our entire backyard is completely garden there's about 20 to oh 25 huge um six by three feet uh, raised beds. We've got grapes growing, oh, great, beautiful grapes growing. Um, we've got cherry trees and Saskatoon plants. I got goji berries growing, marshmallow plants, strawberries, you name it. We stuffed it into this small space. Um, I grow about a hundred tomato plants a year, just piles of plants and dill. Um, I battle with aphids every year. So, so I'm really thinking about the ecosystem is off, especially in town um, or around you. So, so here's a couple of my ideas. Number one is if you have the space, grow wild flowers um, all around your garden. So if you have your garden spot here, the perimeter of your garden, I would put, you know, wild um, grasses that, that are native. Do, do something that, that is native so you're not going to um, send, send a plant and then let it sow seed itself and take over a native plant. Now, you don't want to do that, but, but grow wild plants that all around your garden so it brings in the ecosystem. Different flowers, different plants attract different bugs. So you're really, really looking at attracting those, um, 
uh, predators back in and giving the pest something to eat on besides your dill and other plants. So I've read that in many gardening books, I munchkin, um, to, to do that. Now, because of my area, I'm very limited, so I try to bring in as many plants as I can, um, but I don't have that param perimeter to, to have, you know, let's say four or five feet perimeter of just beautiful flowers. So I'm really looking forward to someday doing that. So if somebody could, could do that, um, I've read really good results um, with that, with controlling aphids and pests, that's something you want to do. Um, the other thing, a couple things that I've tried, I've tried um, to companion plant, definitely. Um, I even got tobacco seeds to grow the tobacco plant um, because the plant is really sticky and it's supposed to attract aphids like you would not believe. So I put it to the test about, I think it was about five years ago. So I put tobacco plant. These plants are huge. I couldn't believe it. I mean, they were at least three feet tall. And <clears throat> I put a plant and then some dill and then a plant and some dill and these big leaves. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a bit of a sore throat, so I'm going to drink some water here some big leaves and and how sticky like I had to wear gloves handling them um, and not just garden gloves like like actual like uh, <clears throat> disposable um, uh, rubber gloves because they, they had such a residue and yes they did attract the aphids but not enough I still lost my deal so the following year, I tried calendula, which is the old time marigold. And marigolds are phenomenal in the garden. I mean, um, for pests, for, for slug deterrence, if you do a close enough border, I mean, they are phenomenal. But again, not enough to save my deal. Like I planted heavily with these, with these um, calendulas and again, nothing. I lost my deal. Um, then, then I just decided, okay, well, I'm going to just do the old, old fashioned method, you know, soap, soapy water and blast them off and rinse them off and take my hands and put gloves on and squish all those aphids. I could have done it every day. There was tens of thousands of aphids and I'm talking about a huge row and, and just labor intensive, I could not even keep up, even if I went out there every single day, squished and washed and and put so nothing. So so with that, I, I made a solution with rubbing alcohol and, and water and oil with a little bit of dish soap in it to spray the aphids. Now that works awesome, absolutely awesome on, on small explosions of aphids because what it does is the rubbing alcohol actually um, penetrates the soft bodies of the aphids and kills them and the oil um, sticks to the aphid aphid so so the it gives a chance for the rubbing alcohol to soak in so that's an awesome mixture um, I even found out it kills ants so if you spray that that on, on your plants and you spray an ant it kills an ant too so hey double bonus hey eh? um, but it wasn't enough to control the big explosion that I was having on my deal um, and and talking with, with other far other uh, sorry other gardeners in town, including my mom, I found out I wasn't battling alone. It, it was a common problem, bigger than what I thought. I thought maybe it was just my area, but it is not just my area. This is a problem, and and people were putting like a a mesh over their their dill so their dill would grow up with some success but as soon as you lift that up or or it grows big enough or your holes are are um too small or a or an ant comes in and and moves the 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 aphid to your plant you're done with so people have have had um sort of success with that um the other thing thing that that I tried with the most success was I laid down tin foil. Yes, tin foil. And the the reflective side up. So I put my tin foil down and I made sure between the sheets there was a gap for my row. So I had tin foil row, tin foil row, tin foil and and so forth and so on. Um so I planted within that that row and I made sure that I was able to water it. Now, the reason why I did that is because 
the theory is that when the aphid comes flying overhead, they see, um, they go over the tin foil and it confuses them which way's up because of the reflection. It looks like the sky, so they get all confused and then they don't know where to land. So I thought, well, what do I have to lose? Why not try this theory out? And I did, and you know what? It did phenomenal. That was the first year I actually had um, dill half decent plants. But I forgot about one thing. It was a really hot summer that, that year. And my plants are coming up real nice. I actually got them to, to like at least over half the size, which I was thrilled that I got that far without them dying. And then the sun was out that one day and it was hot. I mean, it was past, past plus 30 degrees Celsius. It was hot. Well, reflection, right? The sun hits a tin foil, and from the tin foil, it reflects onto the plant. Well, I could have started a fire. Um, I literally scorched my plants. That was such a devastating thing to see. Like, they were crisp. It was like they were hanging over a fire, so I totally fried my plants. So, um, in that case, on a really hot day like that, I should have covered my tin foil and then and then then removed um, a covering, whether that was a mulch or maybe some straw or just even a piece of fabric, anything to take the reflection off. But lessons learned the hard way in the garden. I've done that now with um, under gooseberry plants or or one tree that just had a lot of aphids, I put that, that tin foil around to do the reflection um, theory and it works well. Um, just pay attention to, to the weather, how, how hot it is, so you don't scorch your plants because it will actually happen. Um, so that was some success there. The other thing that, that um, I have tried is just, um, you know, planting it with, with the other plant, caraway. Um, and for for a really smelly plant and no luck either. Um, the other thing that, that I tried was yellow because um, pests like yellow, and um, and putting putting a solution in like a really in a yellow colored bowl to kill the aphids. And again, I think I killed more predators than I did the actual aphids. So I tossed that idea. So. I have battled with this now that I've been in town here for seven years. I have battled with aphids. Um, I feel your pain and I feel your struggle um, with them because I do the same thing. And I'm battling right now with leaf hoppers. Um, I've never seen that either growing up. I mean, I didn't know what I was dealing with until I identified it. I have this big, thick book, actually, about four or five of these big thick books about pests and you got to have a pest identification book. So I flipped through all the pictures trying to match a picture whether it's worms or anything um, and found out I got leaf hoppers. I'm dealing with them on my grapes. So this year I want to plant lots of sunflowers um, around that area to really bring in lacewing because lacewing I want to make it at my best friend as my pest. So I want to try to create that um, ecosystem as I'm living here um, until we do move out to an acreage as best as I can. But growing plants, feeding the, the, the pre sorry, feeding the predators what they need to make that strong is the key um, into a healthy garden. Also to have healthy, also to have healthy plants. Um, you know, soil has got to be healthy. Add the manure, add organic matter, add the leaves, add compost to to strengthen your plants. And that's what I'm doing with the grapes. Even though I had had a, an attack of leaf hoppers on my grapes, I had a bowl full of grapes. I have two great plants, and it was amazing. So my plants stayed strong through the attack, um, but yet, I mean, they did quite a bit of damage, and I need to get get rid of them. So that is my ideas um, with, with um, aphids, my struggle, my personal story with these um, nasty little, little critters. Um, oh, other thing is ants. Let's talk about ants for a moment. Now, you might ask, what does ants have to do with aphids? It has everything to do with aphids. Ants love aphids, okay? So it's like this. If, 
when you're drinking, or let's say you take a teaspoon of honey and put it in your mouth, you kind of go, oh, this is so good. Well, that's what ants do with aphids. They treat, they, they actually milk the aphids, and it's called honeydew. They suck these this honeydew um, um, droplet off the aphid, and it's like a sugar drink to them. So the aphids actually, sorry, the ants actually protect the aphids. So if you have lots of aphids, you'll notice there's always ants going up and down, up and down, up and down the tree or the plant, because they are in relationship with each other. So the ants provide the protection for the aphids to rise. So that's why you find ants attacking, let's say, um, um, ladybug larva or a ladybug or a lacewing because they want to protect their aphids because if they don't have aphids, they don't have their sweet drink of honeydew. And, and they will actually move these aphids around like, like, like a, um, a farmer moving its cattle to one pasture to another. They will move the aphids from one plant to another plant to ensure their survival so they can ensure their, their tasty sweet drink. So you can also control the ant population. So if you've got an ant explosion, control your ant population as well. Get rid of those ants and, and, and that will help also with that. So I, I'm always on a lookout for a new ant nest to get to control the ant population as well. So um, if you have any suggestions, comments, do that. Subscribe to my channel because I'm going to make more videos like this off of your questions. I've got a, a list of videos I want to do, but I'm going to address this topic first. Share with me. Share your experience. Um, especially, you know... Um, uh, make a comment underneath the, the, the video um, and I will definitely um, comment back so we can have a, a, a feed of, of, of Q&A would be awesome um, and, and I want to hear from you. So thank you for watching. Thank you for taking, you know, 20 minutes of your time to hear, hear what I've done. I would like to hear what you've done. Subscribe to my channel, share this video and, uh, and, uh, Let's try to figure out some more ideas how to beat these aphids. Thank you very much. Have a good day.